Right, you just heard Cassandra say, with this spring storm, it is certainly very cold outside. No uh, without a doubt. While we didn't get any snow in and around Albuquerque, we did get some rain and a big cool down, along with some wind. News 13 Samantha McDonald is live downtown with a look at how things are outside right now. Sam, are you there? A cool morning would be a little bit of an understatement. It's very windy, very chilly out here, especially for a May morning. I hope you did not pack away those jackets. While we're waking up to this cold, take a look at this. Others are covered with snow. Lorenzo sent us these viewer pics from the snowfall in Rosiata. You can see they got some good snowfall there. This is what it looked like in Red River last night. Snow coming down hard there. And Ski Santa Fe picked up a little bit as the storm moved through. The spring storm is making for some difficult driving conditions, mostly up north. If you check the NMRoads.com, it shows there are difficult driving conditions on New Mexico Highways 38 and 434 in and around the Taos area and U.S. Highway 64. So you'll want to take it slow in those areas. As our meteorologist Cassandra Crimi said, some areas have snow and the cold will last a little while longer. So do stay warm. Back to you. All right, uh, Samantha, thank you very much. Very windy outside right now. Um, also, according to NM Dot crews are out plowing, salting, and cindering those trouble areas. All right, 533, about 300 firefighters will be back in the Gila today battling the signal fire. They're expected to build a direct line across the northern edge of the fire. Now, yesterday, a little bit of good news is that the wind calmed down a bit to give an air tanker and some helicopters a chance to hit the flames. That includes a DC-10 out of Albuquerque like the one you saw earlier. It dropped a number of loads of fire retardant on the edge of that fire. Right now, the fire is about 10 miles north of Silver City. It's burned about 4,700 acres. None of it is contained. These are the plumes of smoke from it. Now, investigators think people may have caused this fire, but they do not know for sure. Now, because of the fire in the southwestern part of the state, Governor Susana Martinez is pushing city leaders to consider a limit on fireworks. The governor sent out letters to local leaders yesterday saying drought conditions, strong winds and warm temperatures have created conditions for high fire danger here. We're going to keep on following that and let you know what happens. Liz. A strange scandal surrounding an athletic director at an Albuquerque high school continues to unfold. Tom Nauber is on paid leave from Sandia High while the school district looks into alleged misconduct. News 13 has learned that the investigation is over whether Nauber planted a pot pipe in basketball coach Alvin Broussard's office. I'm sure there's something else to it and can't wait till it all comes out so that Tom can clear his name because I know he's a great guy. I just thought that it was not right for Nauber to do that to coach because he's not the type of person to do that. Nauber has had some issues with coaches before. Several years ago, basketball coach Adrian Ortega abruptly left Sandia High. He recently told the Albuquerque Journal Nauber forced him out by making untrue allegations. Two coaches could be in trouble after several of their basketball baseball players at Eastern New Mexico University are accused of being involved in a huge brawl. According to a police report, some members were at an off-campus party last month when some of the players allegedly started grabbing girls. The report says that that's when the first fight broke out between 17 players and students. The next day, both groups started going at it again outside of a campus dorm. Police say two assistant coaches stepped in and told players not to follow the orders of officers who were called to the scene. The players were arrested and could be put on probation or suspended. ENMU's president says the coaches could also face disciplinary action. A new for you this morning. We have learned the man New Mexico State Police shot and killed last week had just been fired from his job. Las Vegas Optic got a hold of a search warrant that shows Arsenio Lujan was fired on Thursday after he walked out of a meeting with his supervisor, supposedly about him using prescription medicine on the job. State police officers later went to Lujan's home after getting a 911 call saying Lujan had been suicidal. Police say he pointed a rifle at them, so they shot and killed him. A one man is behind bars this morning accused in a deadly beating on the Acoma Pueblo. Investigators say Edwin Hutchins had been drinking with friends last Wednesday night when he got belligerent. After he got kicked out of the house he was at, he broke a window. That's when investigators say Arthur Garcia attacked and killed Hutchins with a 10-pound weight. Garcia is now charged with second-degree murder.
All right, at 537, here's a graduation story like you've never heard before. Really like you've never heard. It's about a guy who went to UNM so long ago for his master's degree that the school was still surrounded by the desert. Oh, man, listen to this. Now a 99-year-old World War II vet is finally getting his master's degree from UNM 76 years <laughs> after finishing the coursework. John Hodges wrote his thesis for his master's in history in 1938, but never submitted it before being drafted and serving in the Army Air Corps through the end of World War II. I'd forgotten all about uh, completing the thesis wasn't any reason to. His daughter disagrees. She dug up his thesis, secretly submitted it, and now, more than 75 years after leaving UNM, Hodges is finally getting his master's degree in history this weekend, dated 1938. The university says this will be an early birthday surprise before Hodges turns 100 in October. To take a full look at the story or to see some of the UNM uh, photo archives that we have, we have set up a link. Just go to krqe.com.